Good morning, friends. It's me again. I'm here at Mobile Botanical Gardens to talk to you again about what else? Plants. Now, behind me, you see an array of large, beautiful things. They are large shrubs. I admit to you up front that I am not a large shrub person. So, the saints were with me this morning when I ran into one of my very best horticulture friends who knows all about all shrubs, big, little, medium, tall, whatever, and his name is Bill. And Bill is gonna talk to me about the beautiful things behind me, and then we'll move to the beautiful small things in front of me. Okay, Mr. Bill, have at it, honey. Okay, let's start out here. Uh, this is the uh, Rosalinda Indian Hawthorn. This is not your typical Indian Hawthorn. They get quite large. You've probably seen some on uh, Fairhope Avenue. Uh, they have massive trunks and huge flower heads. Uh, big pink flowers uh, and it's not uh, subjective to the, uh, the blight that hits a lot of the Indian hawthorns. Uh, back here, this one has been around for a while. This is uh, Viburnum odoratissimum uh, or sweet Viburnum. If you want a screen and a fast growing screen, this is it. You can get 15 feet by 15 feet, and it's evergreen, uh, which is great, and also it does flower. Uh, it's kind of like the ligustrum flower. Some people love it, some people hate it, as far as the fragrance. In front here, uh, this is a new selection of Laura Petalum. called Cerise Charm. Theoretically, it's supposed to stay three feet by three feet, but always remember on labels, the size is a suggestion. It depends on where you put it and how well you treat it. Sometimes you can get double that size. Uh, here we have a Yopon Holly, Ilex Vomitoria. This is a native tree. It'll grow in full sun, but it would also grow in sh light shade. Anyway. Uh, in South Carolina, people use this, the leaves to make tea with. It's supposed to be quite good. Uh, the only thing I ever heard about them was uh, the name Ilex vomitoria came about because Native Americans would make a very strong tea out of it. It would cause them to vomit heavily and hallucinate. <laughs> but the difference between a cup of tea and a whole bunch of it is the difference. So don't drink too much. <laughs> okay, here, oh, this is a wonderful tree here. This is uh, the evergreen dogwood, Cornus angustata, uh, Empress of China. The difference between this one and the regular dogwood is that this one does not defoliate. Uh, it's, it is truly evergreen and when it blooms it has foliage on the tree. So it's not quite as showy as the native uh, American dogwood. But the good thing about this is it is resistant to the disease that's been wiping out most of our dogwoods here on the, on the south coast. Um, very nice plant. It likes, like dogwoods, light shade, uh, good drainage. Do you want to take over now? Keep going, Bill. Okay. I don't know anything about that. Okay, we have a number of, uh, two new Mahonias. Uh, this one is called Beijing Beauty. Uh, these 
plants. It's a, it's a fairly large shrub. It will get to three to four feet by three to four feet. The nice thing about these is they are evergreen. They do bloom usually in the winter months. Big sprays of bright yellow flowers. And they can take pretty dense shade. There's another one over here. A new introduction. I really like the foliage on this one. This one is called Marvel. And again, it's supposed to be relatively, well, six feet high by four feet wide. And I think you saw the picture of the, the flowers. It, it's also a winter bloomer, light shade to fairly dense shade. Uh, nice plant to grow. Bill, Bill, would you mind talking to us about the palms, please? Okay. We have three different palms here. This one and this one are uh, Camarops humilis. This is the European fan palm. They're extremely hardy. Uh, and they're not a big palm. They will get up to about 10 feet, and they have multiple trunks at the base. Uh, but it, it, they can take full sunlight, they can take partial shade. Really a nice stuff plant. The one in the back, this is Sable Minor, or the dwarf uh, palmetto palm. Again, another really tough plant. Will take some shade, happier in full sunlight, but it takes, again, very brutal conditions. In the front here, this is Saranoa repens, and it's uh, the silver form of the um, dwarf palmetto. Uh, this, if you grow it in full sunlight, the leaves will develop a beautiful gray cast on them, uh, really make it a good contrast in the garden. Again, uh, full sunlight, good drainage, but they pretty much take anything you can throw at it. It is a multiple trunked uh, palm, and they will get slowly up to about 10 feet. Bill, before you stop behind you on the pedestal, tell us about that. Okay. <laughs> This is one of the uh, Japanese cedars, a mutation. Uh, this one is called Chiramin. It's supposed to max out at about six feet. Uh, I just love it because it's so bizarre looking. We only have two of these, so if you want one, you need to jump on it. I think they'd be excellent for bonsai. Uh, that's what I'm planning. We'll see what happens. Bill, thank you so much. I appreciate it since growing up on a cotton farm, I didn't have much of a chance to learn about palms and all of these other things. My focus was on some of the things I'm going to talk about. Okay, right in front here, we have, this is one of my favorite gardenias. It is variegated. It will stay this small. It blooms profusely when it blooms. It's a late bloomer and folks if you have it and you begin to see the beautiful variegation coming off and turning green just clip that off. It'll if you keep that green clipped off it's got it will stay variegated for you. Uh, I've had one in the ground about three years and it's probably not grown another three inches so I love it. In front is a new introduction of gardenia. It grows very columnar. It doesn't spread wide like most gardenias. It has a beautiful daisy type bloom and the foliage is, as you can see, a very dark, dark green. Uh, it's a gorgeous plant. Uh, it is called Drummond Diamond Spire. Diamond Spire. I'm sorry, it's new and I'm old, so I forgot. Uh, over here is another collection of gardenias. We have quite a few. There's um, Daisy in here. There's probably Snow Girl. Snow Girl, and over there 
is one of the new ones called um not foolproof but it's foolproof and the other one used to be frostproof and then we'll stop with this beautiful color here of this gorgeous plant that is going to stay this color it's going to be a showstopper in your garden it's its name is banana appeal isn't that gorgeous name for that plant so come by see us take advantage of all these beautiful things jenny will have them on her catalog real soon so we are expecting you to drive up and say i'm here for one of those gorgeous things that bill was talking about this morning and have a wonderful day Thank you.